If you're new to Darktable, the number of modules on offer might seem a little daunting or overwhelming. So you've come to the right place. In this video, we are going to do the first of two episodes looking at the, the very basic modules that you want to wrap your head around to get up and running with Darktable. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 128 of Understanding Darktable. A long time ago, I did a video called 10 Modules a Newbie Needs to Get Up and Running or something along those lines. And I was reminded a couple of days ago when a viewer reached out and said, hey, I'm new to Darktable, what modules should I be concentrating on? And I thought, yeah, it probably is about time I revisited that particular video. And so, I've come up with seven utility modules, what I would class as utility modules, and 10 modules that are more focused on image processing. So in this video, we're just gonna look at the seven modules for utility stuff. Uh, and this is an image, by the way, from a shoot I did a couple of weeks ago. It was a fine art nude shoot, uh, which we did at sunrise on a beach with Rainer and her boyfriend who acted as photographer's assistant for me. This is one of the more family friendly images. Number one is Denoise Profiled. Now, this module is one of, oh, I don't know, maybe four or five Denoise modules that exist within Darktable. But the reason I suggest this one as your default denoising module is because that title, Profiled, means that regardless of the camera you shot with or the ISO that you shot with, Darktable has a noise profile for that ISO and that camera. Uh, so when it says here, profile, found match for ISO 500, that's read the metadata of this image, seen that it was shot at 500 ISO on an A7 III, and it has found the noise profile for 500 ISO off an A7 III. So, you can just turn this module on and pretty much leave it on its default values and it's going to do a really nice job of denoising your images. Now, on an A7 III at 500 ISO, I barely even need noise reduction. But if you need noise reduction, start with denoise profiled. That's number one. Number two is lens correction. Now, you might think, do I really need lens correction? And I, I must admit, I very rarely use it myself. But again, this module will default to reading the embedded metadata from your digital images. And if I just turn this on, look at that. I didn't even realize how much vignetting there was to that lens. Uh, what was the lens here? Oh, this was my Sony 70-200 f4. And you can see straight away, without me having tweaked anything, it has reduced a little bit of, uh, not pin cushioning, barrel distortion, maybe? I don't know what you call it, but you can see that it changed the perspective a little bit and it got rid of the vignetting. And that's just without me having touched a thing. So that's lens correction, that's number two. Number three is rotate and perspective. You will see that you have a slider which you can drag in either direction to rotate an image if you want an exact value, right click and enter the value you want, either as a positive or a negative integer. So if I want five degrees, I type in five. If I want minus two degrees, I type in minus two and press enter, and it will give you exactly that degree of rotation. If you want to reset it, just right click, hit zero, hit enter, and you're back to where you started. The perspective side of things, I probably should have found something with some straight lines in it. Uh, it comes in very handy if you're doing architectural photography where you want the verticals of a building not to collapse, particularly if you've shot with a wide angle lens. Uh, these features in here allow you to correct for that. Uh, again, I've done a dedicated video on that, so go and check that out on my channel if you need to dive deeper into the rotate and perspective module. That's number three. Number four is the orientation module. This is a module that you will almost never touch. 
but it is handy if you need to flip an image horizontally or vertically or you just need to rotate it in 90 degree increments. That's pretty much all it does, but it's handy. That's number four, orientation. Number five is the retouch module. Now, hopefully you're not gonna come back from a shoot with little dust spots all over your images because you changed lenses in the field. That's never happened to anybody. <sighs> happens to me way more often than I would care to admit uh, because I have a tendency to change lenses out in the field a lot. I always end up with dust on the sensor. So the retouch module is your friend there. It will allow you to do cloning and healing. And I'm again, not going to go into the details of how it works because I've already done a dedicated video on that. So go and check that out. That's number five, retouch. Number six is the crop module. I don't know about you, but I crop pretty much every image before I export it, simply because my A7 III, the viewfinder gives me 98% coverage of what the sensor can actually see. So I always end up with a little bit more captured in the raw file than what I could actually see through the viewfinder. So I always like to crop just to make sure that my composition is exactly the way I imagined it at the time that I took the shot. Within the crop module under aspect here, you'll find a whole bunch of predefined aspect ratios and they are fixed. So if you want 16.9, then no matter what you do, it will not crop away from a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. The only exception to that rule is the one at the top which says freehand and that will allow you to just mouse over the edges of any edge and adjust the crop to exactly what you want or you can go by the corners and do two axes at once if you want to. Once you have got the crop where you want it, unlike Lightroom, no, you don't hit enter. You simply close the crop module down and that commits the crop that you had to your image. So that is number six, the crop module. And number seven is the sharpen module. Now, you may or may not choose to apply sharpening to your images before you export. I think by default, uh, it used to default on, but it appears that it doesn't anymore. Yeah, if you want to sharpen your images prior to export, then the sharpen module is your seventh and final utility module. All right, that is going to do it for this video. That is the utility modules that I think any new user to Darktable needs to wrap their head around. You're not going to use every one of those on every image, but more than likely at some point you are going to want at least one of those modules and probably more than one. Uh, in the next video, we will talk about the image processing modules that I feel are essential. And until then, take care. I will catch you in the next one.